Hello, my name is Justin Arnott. I'm the Science and Operations Officer here at the National Weather Service Office in Gaylord, Michigan. I'm going to do a quick demonstration of the Fogger tool, um, basically a tool that you can use to populate fog on an hourly basis in your weather grids um, as part of the ESTF. Um, the basic premise that this tool works on is the science that uh, as your dew point depression decreases and goes towards zero, your chances for fog increase um, as long as your wind is relatively light. Um, so let's take a look at how this works in practice. If we take a look at a set of temperature grids here over the Gaylord forecast area, we have temperatures that range but generally in the 30s, um, a few upper 20s there, but as the night goes on, temperatures drop into the lower and middle 20s, maybe up near 30 um, further north. If we take a look at the dew points through that period, they start in the mid to upper 20s, and as the night goes on, they basically stay steady and maybe drop slightly. Um, so. A scenario where you're going to have um, dew point depressions that decrease as the night goes on. So the way you're going to run this tool is you're going to basically select the period in which you want to have the Fogger tool uh, assess the uh, potential for fog. You grab this period, uh, select the period that you're interested in. We're going to go and run the ESTF Fogger tool. So we'll click on that. And you see some options here. Um, we'll discuss these a little bit. Uh, first, you have the ability to remove fog if you're trying to get take it out of the grids, but um, if you're adding it here like we're going to do here, it's going to be append, so it's going to append it to the weather that's already there, so you don't have to worry about it writing over, uh, say, your we other weather types, say rain or snow or whatever. Um, you have the option to include dense fog if you'd like, and then you have the option to cap the coverage. Would you like everything to be you know, no more than patchy, no more than areas, or just have every, every option? there. You can also assign a visibility to the fog as well. Um, the next step is basically uh, what uh, dew point depression would you like to have reserved for the different fog types. So for patchy, in this instance, it's a slider bar. You could change, say, I want a uh, patchy fog as long as the dew point depression is 2 degrees or less, um, and if it's more than 2 degrees, I will have no fog mention. Areas, here it's set at 1 and then uh, widespread is set at 0. So basically the way this tool would work at this point is for all areas where there is a dew point depression of 0, the fog would be widespread. If it was from 0 to 1, it would be areas and from 1 to 2 it would be patchy. But there's a caveat, the caveat being the wind speed. And so it also looks to make sure that the winds are not too strong. Basically it says you need calm winds for uh, uh, the fog to remain widespread. Uh, 0 to 1 knot for winds to remain um, in the or for fog to remain in the areas category and then one to two uh, knots for patchy. So let's just run it with the default CAN values here. It's going to take a minute because it needs to go through each of those hourly temperature and dew point grids and basically that's all it's looking at. Um, your, your temperature, dew point, and wind grid so you need to have those in order before you run the tool. And let's kind of look at how this steps through the night given our scenario. You see um, this, t this tool is going to work on a pixel by pixel basis so you can get some very small areas of, of different amounts of fog. But let's, let's just scan through the, uh, through the overnight period. Basically what you're going to see is fog gradually expanding in space um, as we go through the night. And if I you know, stop here at 8Z and zoom in a little bit, you'll see some pretty high detail. Now, that's up to you at this point whether you want to preserve this detail. Um, you know. It, it's never. It's sometimes not a bad option to press the smooth button once or twice, um, depending on how pixely you'd really like this. If you think this is really doing um, the best job, or if if, if you'd like an, a, a little smoother approach, that's up to you. Um, but basically, you see some patchy values, some area values here, and then in the in some areas, you see the widespread fog, where we have dew point depression again of, of zero and winds of zero. Um, and so, uh, basically, you have a progression of fog through the night. Um, that completely depends on your temperature, dew point, and wind grids. Now, if you have fog in the grids and you want to eliminate them, you could select that same time period, um, run the ESTF Fogger tool, just say remove, and um, basically take that fog out. Um, you could rerun the tool just as another example. Say I wanted to patch the coverage or cap the coverage at patchy. Um, I could change that because you know maybe it's not a scenario where you really think widespread fogs expected you as the forecasters determine that is likely to be it, you know it's going to be pat no worse than patchy and so if we take a look at that it's the same basic area lined out by fog but now it's only one on one type it's only patchy and that that area evolves but there's only one type within it so you have that option as well 
So uh, that's the ESTF Fogger tool, and it gives you a pretty quick and efficient way to populate hourly grids of fog. Um, once again, once that you have your temperature, dew point, and wind grids all set. Thanks for listening.